another day's journey for the blessed privilege of worshiping him in spirit and in truth together. Amen. Amen. Let's stand to our feet as we enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Holy name, 
Appeal and come. Yeah. O oh Lord, let thy will be done. On earth as it is already done. Yes. And give us this day, Lord. This day, Lord. Our day of This day, Lord. And forgive our debt. Yeah. As we forgive our debtors. Yeah. And lead us not unto temptation. Or deliver us from all sin and evil. Lisa. For there is the kingdom, the power, and the glory of thou forever. Here it is once more in again. A few of your own handmade servants. Lord, come. Just to say thank you this morning. Thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for watching over us all night last night. Yes. And early this morning, you touched us with the finger of love. Yes, yes. And our eyes flew open. Thank you, Jesus. And behold, we saw a brand new day. Thank you. A day that we had never seen before. <laughs> And we'll never see again. My Lord, we pause today just to say thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Lord, thank you. Lord, we thank you because you've been so good. You've been so kind. And you've been so merciful to all of us. Lord, you have brought us from a mighty long ways. And we pause just to say thank you this morning. Thank you, thank you Lord. Oh, we just want to thank you. Thank we just you. can't thank you enough. Yeah. Lord, just have mercy upon us. Have mercy. Thank you. Have mercy upon me, Lord. Lord, I come this morning with a bow down head. I just want to say thank you. Because you've been so good to me. Lord, you've been my everything. Right now. I can't do nothing without you, Lord. You is my rock. Yeah. And a weary land. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, you benefit. Lord, I come now. Before I ask for any blessing, dear Lord, I want you to search and research my heart. And if you find anything like sin, oh, Lord, I ask that you put it in the sea of forgiveness. Well, it shall never rise again. Yeah. Oh, Lord, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Lord, I ask you to bless each and every one that are assembled here today. Bless the strong of hope, church. Mm-hmm. Bless it in the blessing that you see it in need of. Please, sir. Bless it. Financial and spiritual, Lord. Lord, we ask that you remember our pastor this morning, the Reverend Nicholas Kevin Dolman. Touch him, Lord. Touch him. Lord, throw your arms of protection around him. Protect him. From all harm, hurt, and danger. Yes, sir, Jesus. Lord, bless his family. Touch. Protect them, Lord. Yes. Lord, we ask that you remember this neighborhood. Yes. Remember yes. the city, Lord. Yes. Oh, the whole United States of America, Lord. Yes. We ask that you remember us. We need you down here 
We can't get along without you, Lord. Please, son. Lord, we thank you. Thank Most you. of all, we thank you for your darling son, Jesus. Yes. Who died on Calvary Cross. That we might have the right to the tree of life. Yes. Oh, these blessings and all the other blessings we ask in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. And have mercy. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you. Oh, Lord. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Thank you. 
prepare now to focus on giving back unto God what is due to God, just a small portion of what the Lord has done for us. For surely he has been good to us in many ways. Just thinking about today, the Lord woke you up this morning. As we prepare now to give unto God, let us think upon Malachi, the third chapter, verses six through 10. As we think upon these words, let us not cheat nor rob God of his awesome blessings he has been given us. It reads, for I am the Lord, I do not change. Therefore you are not consumed, O sons of Jacob. Yet from your days of your fathers you have gone away from my ordinance and have not kept them. Return to me, and I will return to you, said the Lord of hosts. But you say, in what way shall we return? Will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me. But you say, in what ways have we robbed you? In tithes and offerings. You are cursed with the curse. For you have robbed me, even this whole nation. Bring all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. And try me now in this, said the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, such blessing, that there will not be room enough to receive it. As we prepare now on the ways of giving, you can either drop it off here at our physical location on Tuesdays and Thursdays between 11 and four, or mail it to our post office box using electronic means of cash app, dollar sign, stronger hope, or using give the flyer, looking for the church with the lighthouse and our illustrious pastor, the stronger hope Baptist church. As we now prepare to give, let us offer this prayer. Lord, we thank you today for these gifts that we're about to receive. Lord, we ask that you would open doors for those that are in need, those that don't have to give. Lord, we ask your special blessing upon them that you will bless them spiritually and financially. For those of us that have it to give, Lord, we ask that you would touch our hearts that we would do what's right and give all that is due to you and not rob you in any ways. It is in Jesus' name we ask you all. Let your heart say amen. amen. Those of you that are here in our sanctuary, you may begin coming. Those on my right, you may start. <laughs> Thank you. 
give God the glory. But I can't stop looking at Ryan. And how he's praising God. My, my. Really outdo it all of us. <laughs> and he's clapping I'm trying my best not to laugh, <laughs> but God is worthy. Worthy. He's worthy to be praised. Amen. From the rising of the sun Amen. to the going down of the same, he's worthy Amen. to be praised. And it's amazing how an infant That's can right. understand praise. That's, right. That's how simple it is right. to give God the praise that he is worthy to receive. Amen? Amen. And so we thank God for that today. Amen. But even the babies Amen. and the little children can freely express their praise to God. Amen? Amen. If you won't praise him, now he'll make the babies praise him. He'll make the children praise him. And we know he's even able to make the rocks cry out and, and praise him. Amen. Amen. Do you love the Lord today? Oh, yeah. I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you, Lord, today. Because
you took upon yourself the sins of the entire world. Yes. And you alone were wounded for our transgressions, yes. bruised for our iniquities, the punishment of our peace. When God was upon your shoulders, and by your stripes were healed, we thank you then for his blessed assurance. We thank you for this perpetual peace that you've given us. We thank you for this grace in which we now stand. We thank you, Lord, for your unfailing mercies, for your great faithfulness. Thank you for kissing us this morning yes. with brand new mercy to meet every need that we may have on today. Thank you that you know what we stand in the need of before we even open our mouths to ask you. Oh God, for these things and so many more, we give you the praise for all of the doors you've opened for us, for all of the ways you've made, for how you loved us so unconditionally, for how you pursued us so relentlessly. Oh God, for how you provided for us beyond our imagination. We give your name all of the praise. We say that our forefathers and mothers, if we had 10,000 tongues, yeah. we could not praise you enough with every one of them. For you've been good to us. Yes. You brought us from a mighty long way. You're not finished with us because your word says he will become a good work in you. Yeah. We'll complete it until the day of redemption. We thank you now. Thank you. We ask that you will continue to speak, Lord, for your servants are listening. Hide your servant behind the cross of Calvary. That my preaching be Christ centered, biblically based, theologically sound. Yes. Use every part of me to declare a risen king. Oh God, let your people be edified. Yeah. Let unbelievers be evangelized. Yeah. Let Christ be exalted. And let God the Father be glorified. And we'll be so very careful to give thy name all of the glory, all of the honor, all of the praise. In Jesus' name. It's a high and holy season in the life of the church as we reflect, rest, and rejoice in the price that Jesus paid for us. He paid it all. Amen. And we thank God that we can stress and emphasize the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. Amen. So every year I endeavor with the Lord's strength to ex exegetically escort you on a road trip. Uh, a gospel road trip. Yeah. A gospel journey. Yeah. Luke says that around this time Jesus steadfastly set his face for Jerusalem. Yeah. Uh -huh. During this time the Lord Jesus says many memorable things. He encounters some unforgettable people. He performs some memorable miracles. All of this happens on his journey to Jerusalem. And I've tried my best through the few years to stress that. That during this time, we're on a journey to Jerusalem. We're on a road to resurrection. Right. And that road to resurrection must cut through a hill called Calvary. Yes. Right. You cannot get to an empty tomb mm -hmm. before you spend time mm -hmm. at a hill called Calvary. Mm -hmm. right. And so this year I made it my aim to preach from a series entitled Scenes surrounding the Savior's cross. Uh, yeah. 
seen surrounding the Savior's cross. With that in mind, I want to look at another scene surrounding the Savior's cross. It's found in the 19th chapter of John. I want to read the first 16 verses. It's a rather long narrative, but I want you to get the context. John chapter 19, and I'll begin with verse 1. I'm going to read this from the New King James Version. Listen to how this reads. So then, Pilate took Jesus and scourged him. And the soldiers twisted a crown of thorns and put it on his head. And they put on him a purple robe. Then they said, Hail, King of the Jews. And they struck him with their hands. Pilate then went out again and said to them, Behold, I am bringing him out to you, that you may know that I find no fault in him. And then Jesus came out, wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe, and Pilate said to them, Behold the man. Therefore, when the chief priests and officers saw him, they cried out, saying, Crucify him, crucify him. Pilate said to them, You take him and crucify him. For I find no fault in him. The Jews answered him, We have a law, and according to our law, he ought to die because he made himself the son of God. Oh God. Therefore, when Pilate heard that saying, he was the more afraid, and went again into the praetorium and said to Jesus, where are you from? But Jesus gave him no answer. Then Pilate said to him, are you not speaking to me? You not know that I have power to crucify you and power to release you? Oh. Jesus answered, you could have no power at all against me unless it had been given you from above. Oh my God. Therefore, the one who delivered me to you has the greater sin. From then on, Pilate sought to release him. And the Jews cried out, saying, If you let this man go, you are not Caesar's friend. Whoever makes himself a king speaks against Caesar. When Pilate therefore heard that saying, he brought Jesus out and sat down in the judgment seat in a place that is called the pavement, but in Hebrew, Gabbatha. Now it was the preparation day of the Passover and about the sixth hour. And he said to the Jews, Behold your king. And they cried out, Away with him. Away with him. Crucify him. Pilate said to them, Shall I crucify your king? Chief priest answered, We have no king but Caesar. And he delivered him to them to be crucified. Then they took Jesus and led him away. Grass withers and flower fades, but the word of the Lord will stand forever. Yeah, uh, with this section in mind, I'm going to speak from this subject, the cry for crucifixion. Uh -huh. The cry for crucifixion. Yes, sir. Do you ever silently consider all of 
what the Lord Jesus Christ went through for you? Yeah, for you. Right. Uh, Do you sometimes, amid the hustle and bustle of our fast-paced world, slow down long enough and seize moments of silence and solitude and think about how obedient to the point of death Jesus was, even the death of the cross. And do those moments of reflection ever cause your soul to shiver, your heart to bleed, especially when the lyrics of that classic hymn come to mind? Was it for crimes that I have done? He groaned upon the tree. Amazing pity, grace unknown, and love beyond degree. Alas and dead, my Savior bleed. And did my sovereign die? Would he devote that sacred head for such a worm as I? Well, might the sun in darkness hide and shut his glories in when Christ, the mighty maker, died for man, the creature's sin. Our text today, John chapter 19, verse 1 to verse 16, is part of a larger narrative that actually begins with John chapter 19 and verse 28. And it concludes with John chapter 19, verse 16. John chapter 18, verse 28 reads as such. Then they led Jesus from Caiaphas to the Praetorium. Another way of saying Pilate's headquarters. And it was early morning. Oh yes, my brothers and sisters. It is early, early Friday morning what is that? before the dew can get a chance to fully dress the grass, before the sun has a chance to fully rise from its hot chambers, an exhausted, drained Jesus is being led away for another trial. Oh, it's been a tedious, trying, Thursday night and Thursday evening for Jesus. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's been a tedious trying Thursday evening for Jesus in the Olive Press, mm -hmm. the Garden of Gethsemane, right. where he prays that prayer that we're all so familiar with, Father, if it be possible, mm -hmm. let this cup pass from me. Oh, yeah. Nevertheless, not what I will, but what you will. You will. Okay. It's been a long evening for Jesus in that garden of Gethsemane where he prays and drops, sweats great drops of blood in that garden of Gethsemane where he's betrayed and arrested. Yeah. It's also been a tedious, trying yeah. Thursday night for Jesus yeah. in the house of Caiaphas, the high priest, yeah. Yeah. as the Lord Jesus Christ, the judge of both the righteous and the dead, stands before chief priests and elders and the Sanhedrin council. Yeah. And while Peter is being tested in the outer courtyard of Caiaphas' house and consequently denying the Lord Jesus Christ three times, Jesus is on trial. Mm -hmm. He's before the Sanhedrin council and they've charged him with blasphemy. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And Matthew, the gospel writer, records for us in the 26th chapter, 66 verse of his account, that they said to Jesus, he is deserving of death. I want you to know today that all of the dark forces of hell heard that statement. He is deserving of death. All of the forces of hell were mobilized and committed to destroy the Lord Jesus through human hands. Wow. First Judas, yeah. 
than the Jewish religious leaders. And now on to Pontius Pilate, Roman governor of Judea. Oh, he's deserving of death. And hell is mobilized to destroy Jesus. As our hearts ache over Jesus' agony and anguish at the hands of these human men, we're reminded today of the Lord's hand. We're reminded today of the Father's hand. Providentially presiding over it all. And you know what the good news today is? That Jesus knew this. Yes. He knew that his enemies were destined to play their part. Mm -hmm. But he also knew that the Father owned the script. Oh, you ought to be glad about that. Yeah. The divine scheme of humanity's salvation through Christ was already settled in heaven. Yes. And Jesus knew this. Yes. In Matthew chapter 20, verse 17 to verse 19, the Lord Jesus predicted his death and resurrection for the third and final time. Mm -hmm. Matthew tells us while Jesus was going up to Jerusalem, uh -huh. he took those 12 selfish disciples aside oh, yeah. and he said to them on the way, we are going up to Jerusalem mm -hmm. and the son of man will be handed over to the chief priests and scribes. Yeah. And they will condemn him to death. Mm -hmm. and then they will hand him over to the Gentiles to be mocked and flogged and crucified. Yes, and on the third day, he will be raised. Mm -hmm. Oh, Jesus knew all of this. Yes. Yeah. And it is with a steady, determined beat. Steady. The Lord Jesus never flinched no. in the face of death as he draw, draws nearer and nearer to Calvary. Oh, let me share the story with you today. Yeah. Do you ever meditate on what Jesus went through wow. for you? Wow. And are you glad, my brothers and sisters, that although he was handed over to crucifixion by human hands, mm -hmm. the Father's hand all right, now. All right. was providentially presiding over it all. Oh, yeah. oh yes, Judas handed him over to the religious leaders. Yes, oh yes, the religious leaders handed him over to Pilate. Yes. And Pilate handed him over to Herod and then Herod handed him back over to Pilate. Yes. And with all of the hands yes. on Jesus' trial, it is God the Father's hand that presides yes. over yes. it all. Yes. You ought to be glad about that today. Yes. That yes. God yes. the Father is eternally invested and what goes on in your life down here on earth. Mm, he never mm. turns his back. He never closes his eyes. He is concerned about what you and I go through. Yeah. John said in John chapter 18 and verse 32, mm -hmm. and it was early morning. What is it? Really? it was early morning. Matthew echoes that same sequence of events in his gospel account. When you look at Matthew chapter 27, verse 1 and verse 2, even Matthew says that. Matthew says, when morning came, all of the chief priests and the elders of the people conferred together. Yeah. Well, they colluded together. They conspired mm. together mm -hmm. against Jesus in order to bring about his death. Matthew says, they bound Jesus. Led him away and handed him over to Pilate, the governor. Can you see Jesus? It's early Friday morning. All of the gospel writers record the events of Friday morning in the life of Jesus Christ. But it is John, the gospel writer, who goes into great detail concerning this dramatic scene of Jesus' trial before Pontius Pilate. Yes. When we read the Gospel of Jesus according to Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, we can conclude this. That on Friday morning, the clear, conspicuous cries for Christ's crucifixion prevailed. Mm -hmm. They got what they wanted. 
Yeah, right. They wanted Jesus crucified. Mm -hmm. Well, let me move to the first movement of the sermon. Yeah, right. Number one, I want to talk to you about the crowd's cry for crucifixion was an unceasing cry. The crowd's cry for crucifixion was an unceasing cry. In the first scene, John chapter 18, verse 29 to verse 32. Pilate tries to evade his responsibility right. by telling the Jewish religious leaders to judge Jesus according to their law. Yeah. But note how their demand for Jesus' death by way of crucifixion builds with this scene yeah. and to an unceasing cruel cry. Do you see them? Pilate has yet to even give the verdict. And they have said to Pilate, it is not lawful for us to put anyone to death. Now they could have stoned Jesus to death if they wanted, according to their law, but, but only the Romans had that kind of power to execute capital punishment in the form of crucifixion. Yeah, yeah. If they wanted Jesus dead, they could have stoned him. Mm -hmm. mm. They wanted him to experience a certain kind of death. Oh. Mm. They wanted capital punishment. Yeah. But in the divine scheme of things, God was providentially orchestrating Jesus' death by way of crucifixion. Oh, wow. yeah. And Jesus knew this. Mm -hmm. John chapter 3 and verse 14, Jesus says, yes, yes. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, mm -hmm. even so must the Son of Man yeah. be lifted up. Yeah. Oh, Jesus knew this. Mm -hmm. He knew that he would not die by being stoned to death. He knew that one day he would be lifted up. Mm -hmm. John chapter 8 and verse 28, John tells us, then Jesus said to them, when you lift up the Son of Man, uh -huh. then you will know that I am He. Yes, sir. And that I do nothing of myself, but as my Father taught me, I speak these things. Jesus knew that He would die by being lifted up. Mm -hmm. In John chapter 12, verse 32 to verse 33, He says, and I, and I if I am yeah. lifted up from the yeah. earth, will draw all peoples to myself. He said that signifying the death that he would die. The, the cry for death through crucifixion demanded by the Jewish leaders was, was still in fulfillment of God's plan. Yes, sir. Oh, the songwriter reminds us today how to reach the masses. All right. yeah. Men of every bird. Yeah. For an answer, Jesus. <laughs> Gave the key. What? And, I, and I, if I be lifted up from the earth, yeah. will draw all men unto me. Lift them up, church. Yes. Lift them up. Yes. Still he speaks from eternity. And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men yeah. unto me. He's given us the answer and the key to reach men, women, boys, and girls all across this globe. He was lifted up. Yes. These Jews preferred that Jesus would die oh. by crucifixion. Mm -hmm. They wanted him to experience the crucible yeah. of crucifixion. Mm -hmm. They preferred that his experience with death would be in the most degrading way, in the most humiliating way, in the most horrifying way. They wanted Jesus to experience a criminal's death, a death that was fit for slaves and the worst of criminals who were guilty of treason and sedition. And this crowd's cry for crucifixion was unceasing. I want you to see that today. Yeah, yeah. It was an unceasing cry. Amen. Oh yes, if your Bible is open, open today, given the eight movements. Eight. Did you hear that? Eight? I the eight movements of Pilate 
between Jesus and the people mm -hmm. over, over and over again. Mm -hmm. Throughout this scene of Jesus standing before Pilate, mm -hmm. we observe that Pilate is indecisive. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. The text tells us that Pilate is uncertain. Yeah, he really doesn't know how to handle this Jesus. Yeah, yeah, we notice that Pilate is, is wavering, vacillating, if you will, back and forth. And, he, and that's what he does. He goes back and forth. Back and forth inside of the headquarters to talk with Jesus. After he's talked with Jesus, he goes outside of the headquarters to talk with the crowd. Yeah. Yeah. We'll see those eight movements of Pilate. Okay. Movement number one, right there in our text. Mm -hmm. John chapter 18, verse 29 and verse 32. Mm -hmm. He's talking to the crowd. Yeah. The text says Pilate went out to them. Yeah. Notice that second movement by Pilate. It's right there in the 18th chapter of John, verse 33 to verse 38. He's talking to Jesus now. Uh -huh. The text says Pilate entered the praetorium again. Yeah. Yeah. Called Jesus and said to him, are you the king of the Jews? <laughs> Notice that third movement by Pilate. It's right there in the 18th chapter, verse 38 to verse 40. If you don't mind me walking the text a bit. Go ahead, sir. Now we notice Pilate talking with the people again. The Bible says he went out again to the Jews uh -huh. and said to him, I find no fault in him at all. No fault. Notice the movement of Pilate the fourth time. Right there in the 19th chapter, verse 1 to verse 3, he's back with Jesus again. Yes. And this time he has Jesus flogged. He has him whipped. But then notice the fifth movement of Pilate is there in verses 4 to verse 7 of chapter 19. He's back again, talking with the people, trying to evade his responsibility, maybe perhaps trying to see if they'll compromise. The text says Pilate then went out again and said to them, I find no fault in him. Notice the sixth movement of Pilate. It's right there in verse 8 to verse 11. He's back again talking to Jesus. Yeah. So superstitious of a person. He's trying to investigate the possibility of Jesus being this supernatural being. Pilate was all the more afraid of Jesus. Said to Jesus, where are you from? Notice the seventh movement of Pilate. I'm just a gospel storyteller. Go ahead now. I'm trying to tell the story as it is. Yeah. Uh -huh. Notice that seven movement of Pilate in the text in verse 12. He's back again to the people. Trying to release Jesus. Trying to dismiss the case. But the people won't have it. They notice Pilate's eighth movement. His eighth back and forth movement. Between Jesus and the crowd. And on this eighth movement now, Pilate sits down in the seat of judgment, mm -hmm. gives his verdict of crucifixion. Yeah. These are some unwavering moments of Pilate. Oh, yeah. These are some unwavering movements from, for Pilate. Yeah. But his unwavering movements could not stop the crowd's unceasing cry for crucifixion. Will you know today that three cries? All right. Will you know that in the text? Three cries throughout this narrative? Three cries. In John chapter 19, verse 6, they cried out. Mm -hmm. In John chapter 19, verse 12, they cried out. Mm -hmm. In John chapter 19, verse 15, they cried out. Mm -hmm. And deep down in Pilate's heart, he knows that Jesus is an innocent man. Yeah. 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 Deep down in his core, yeah. he knows that Jesus is not guilty. And he knows that Jesus is not deserving of death. It's the reason why he keeps going back and forth My God. between Jesus mm -hmm. 
and the Jewish people. Yeah. Here's the reason why Pilate tells them more than once, I find no fault yeah. in Jesus. Yeah. Oh, if Pilate only had courage that day. Yeah. If he only had courage to stand up against the peer pressures of right. his day. You know peer pressure. We all have peer pressure. If he only had the courage to stand up and dismiss that case against Jesus. Mm -hmm. But it was destined. Yes, sir. It was destined in heaven's account. Yes. It was destined according to God's divine scheme mm -hmm. and God's schedule. Yeah. Oh, you can praise God today. Yes. Yeah. For his sovereign providence yes. over your life. Yes. But then secondly, I want you to see the crowd's cry for crucifixion was an uncaring cry. Uncaring. It was an unceasing cry. Yeah, yeah. But it was an uncaring cry. Mm -hmm. All right. As well. Yeah. Oh. Do you sometimes in life just pause? Oh. Think about all that Jesus went through for you. Wow. Oh. The crowd's cry for crucifixion was an uncaring cry. Mm -hmm. Pilate hoped to avert the unceasing cry for crucifixion by appeasing the Jews with having Jesus whipped. Yes, you got to take our 21st century eyes and put on our first century goggles. The text says, so then Pilate took Jesus and scourged him. Yeah. Fogged him, mm -hmm. whipped him. Yeah. Those Roman soldiers, they stripped Jesus. They tied him to a post and they had him whipped unmerciful. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. oh, you've never seen that movie, The Passion of Christ? Mm -hmm. yeah. oh, yeah. It was a gruesome scene. Yeah. And the instrument of torture, Brother Moller, was a sharp wooden handle to which several pieces of leather thongs were attached and embedded in those strips of leather thongs were pieces of, of bone, Come on, Pastor. pieces of metal. And with each lash to the back of the Lord Jesus, his skin is torn and lacerated. Oh, the flogging was so severe that historians tell us, like Eusebius the historian, that some men could not even survive the flogging. Yeah. Some of them could not even survive the whooping. They would die right there at the post because of the excruciating pain and incredible amounts of blood that they lost. But Jesus but Jesus. Oh, I'm trying to tell the story today. Jesus didn't die at the post because Calvary was on the horizon. And you ought to be glad about that today that he was still determined to live and experience every ounce of pain and every ounce of excruciating trauma just so that he can secure our yes, salvation. Yes, yes, oh, Jesus. Yes, Do you see him today? Yes. Do you see him bloody, yes. bruised and broken? Yes. And then these Roman soldiers made sport of Jesus. Yeah. Mm. One of them takes long spikes mm -hmm. from a date palm. Twisted it yeah. to make an imitation crown. Yeah. Fix it, fix it. And they jammed it on his head. Yeah. Yeah. Or oh, do you see Jesus today? Yeah. More pain and more blood. Oh, church, we cannot sanitize the sufferings of Jesus. No. We can't clean this messy scene up. We must take men, women, boys, and girls to the gruesome scene of Jesus' whipping, yes, Jesus' suffering, yeah. and Jesus' ultimate death. You can't sanitize oh, the scene of Jesus. Mama. 
What can wash? <laughs> I wish I had a church in the house. Yes, sir. Uh, what can wash away my sins? Nothing. nothing. What can make me whole again? Nothing. Nothing but the blood of Jesus Christ. Anybody know today? I know it was the blood. Yeah. That Jesus shed for me on Calvary's cross. It was the blood of Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Therefore, we can't clean this mess up. No, no, no. This bloody mess is a part of our atonement. Yes, yes, it's a part of our redemption with God. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's the only reason why we can have right relationship with God. We must trace the red stain path of Jesus Christ from judgment hall to judgment hall and ultimately to Calvary's cross. At the cross. Yeah. Oh, I wish I had a church in the building. Mm. At the cross. When I first saw the light and the burdens of my heart, they rolled away. It was there by faith. I received my sight and now I'm happy all the day. You can't clean this mess up. And yes, pilot. Yes, pilot. Hoping. That the Jews would have a change of heart. Uh -huh. His pilot, mm -hmm. wavering pilot, yeah. mm -hmm. <laughs> no courage, well. pilot, mm -hmm. spineless yeah. pilot, hungry and lustful for political power, pilot, because he knows that if word gets back to Tiberius Caesar, he can be out. Of a job and, and his pilot hoping deep down in his heart that the Jews would have mercy on Jesus. Yeah. That's why he presents Jesus beaten. Mm -hmm. That's why he has Jesus presented bloodied mm -hmm. and bruised. Perhaps when they see a bloodied, bruised, beaten Jesus. They'll change their mind. Yeah. Will the Jews care for Jesus? After seeing him beaten, bloodied and bruised, would they have sympathy on the Savior? Pilate sarcastically says, I'm almost at the end of the text, Pilate sarcastically says, Behold the man. Look at him. Yeah. Verse 6 says, Therefore, when the chief priests and officers saw him, they cried out, saying, Crucify him. Yeah. Crucify him. Oh, can you see the scene today? Oh. They were not moved no. No, no, no. with compassion, no, no. they were moved instead with more cruelty and callousness. In fact, not an ounce of compassion filled their hearts when they saw Jesus. He came to his own, John says, and his own received him not. Oh, beloved, towards the end, they, they reject Jesus. They reject Jesus. When you read this narrative, they they reject Jesus and God as their one and only king. Mm -hmm. By standing up and pledging their allegiance to Caesar. Mm -hmm. Verse 16 says, then he, Pilate, mm -hmm. handed him over to be crucified. And, and they took Jesus and they led him away. Mm -hmm. Old church were on the road to resurrection. Yes. Mm -hmm. We're on a journey to Jerusalem. Yes. So much emphasis is placed on this season of Lent yeah. where people give up and make sacrifices of different things. But we've got to remember Jesus went through so much for us. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Lord. He died. He died. Yeah. For us. Yeah. Oh, I know Good Friday is on the way. I know Holy Week is on the way, but we can't ever stop talking about the fact that one Friday he died. Well, oh, that's why I love when the Black Baptist preacher and pastor says in his pulpit, never allowing his congregation.
them to forget that Jesus died. Oh, he's got to go to Calvary. He's got to make his rounds and say on one Friday he died. He's got to keep on and keep it on talking about Calvary because without Calvary we wouldn't have a right relationship with the Lord God of heaven and earth. Yeah, yeah. Dr. Melvin Wade of California told the story of his brother being asked a question by a young man one day. Uh -huh. a young man asked the preacher, why are you preachers always talking about he died? Yeah. Mm. Why are you always talking about he was buried and he rolls early Sunday morning. What's the matter with some of y'all? Why, why are you always celebrating he died and he was buried and he rolls early Sunday morning? And so the question was asked to the young man. Well, let me ask you this question. Why every time I see a baseball game, somebody is trying to get to home base? Mm. Well, why every time I see a basketball game, Somebody trying to shoot the ball yeah. in the rack. Mm. Why every time I'm looking at a football game, they're trying to get the ball across the goal line. Yeah. Why every time I'm watching a hockey game, someone's always trying to get the puck into the goal. Mm. Why every time I see Tiger Woods, he's trying to get that little white ball into the hole. And, and the young man told the preacher, well, it's easy, preacher. That's how you win the game. Mm. <laughs> man and he said you know what young brother he says we you know why we're always talking about the same thing you want to know why we're always saying he died and he was buried and he got up from the grave is because oh, that's how we win the game yeah and all what it cross on his shoulders yeah watched him on the ass onto a hill called calvary and they fulfilled the scriptures if i yeah. I'll draw all men yeah. unto me. I want to tell you that one Friday yeah. he died. He died. Yeah. He died. Yes, sir. He died. Well, we're not there yet. I know we're not there yet. Yeah. Friday's on the way. It's coming. It's coming. I'm going to put him up there. I, I won't say he died yet, but one day he died. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. One yeah. day he died. Yes, sir. He died. Oh, yeah. And we can't stop talking oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. about Jesus yeah. going to Calvary. Yes, mm. and you know the story. Yeah. You know the story, don't you? Yeah. You know what happened on that Good Friday. Oh, yeah. But it was a long day for Jesus. It was a long day. It was a long week for Jesus. Yeah. It was a long Thursday night. Yes. For Jesus. Yes. And even with Friday, Friday's Calvary on the horizon, uh -huh. Christ did not flinch. Oh, no. I Kept on going yeah. to the cross. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We can celebrate that today. Yes. We can praise God today. Yes. Yes. We can thank God that it was at the cross. Yes. First, saw the light. God bless you. God bless you, sir. All right, preacher.
Maestro, yeah. Reverend Hardy Davis, y'all. Yeah. And did not our pastor preach without a voice? Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. And we had a visitor in the sanctuary that got a little bit of the spirit, too. Some of y'all gonna catch that later. <laughs> <laughs> there was a lizard that was running through the church. He would move and he stopped when he heard Pastor say something. Then when Pastor got a little quiet, he moved some more. 
Amen. You touched the lizard, Pastor. <laughs> Amen. Amen. <laughs> Laughter is good for the soul. Amen. 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 We are so happy today. The best tow truck driver in America Amen. is here today celebrating his birthday. Brother Fred Wilson, y'all. Amen, amen. God bless you, sir, for another year's journey. Amen. amen. Also celebrating the birthday this week is Sister Bridget Green on the 23rd and Sister Fanny Jackson, 85 years young, on the 25th. Amen. <laughs> amen. I believe Pastor mentioned more about this. Well, Pastor is on the road Sunday. Amen. Heading back to his home church. He is coming back. Amen. If I got to drive out there myself, he'll be back. Amen. Uh, preaching for their church's anniversary, Pastor Joel Green is the pastor. Amen. They have a host of preachers preaching on the 24th. Pastor Mediate Derwan is preaching, and Pastor Kevin Jenkins will be preaching on the 25th, and Pastor will close it out. In Pot Two Ville, Louisiana. I got it right this time. Amen. Amen. Let the church say amen, gang. Amen. God bless you again, sir, for that message. And we are praying for your strength. Amen. Amen. Let's receive our pastor once again. Amen. Sister Cry, you want to do your presentation now? Amen. of my breast, 
the grace of my style. I'm a woman, phenomenally. Phenomenal woman, that's me. Now you understand just why my head's not bowed. I don't shout or jump about or have a talk or have to talk real loud. When you see me passing, it ought to make you proud. I say, it's in the click of my heels, the bend of my hair, the palm of my hand, the need for my care, because I'm a woman, phenomenal. Phenomenal woman, that's me. Thank you. Very nice. I'm going to ask you to come to help me out here. Deacon Hooks, I'm going to ask you to come and help me out here, please. Wow. Um, I was always taught growing up that you respected your elders. And so we have a member here in our church. She's a very phenomenal woman, Sister Amanda Williams. Hey. Betty Carter. Oh. Every, every week I have, every time I have, I, 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 I put them 
continue in one another church, continuing the work and will of God together. And so connecting uh, constantly our church with community by demonstrating the love of Christ by just simply meeting the basic need for food uh, is an opportunity to give God glory. Jesus said, and I know you know what he said, when I was hungry, you fed me. And as Jesus had compassion on people, we've got to keep on having compassion as well by just feeding people. And so we thank God for those opportunities that come our way uh, to do what Jesus did. And so I was making sure I made some notes because I didn't want to forget everything or anything really. Uh, Deacon Hooks, just do me one favor and go ahead and click the mute button on Facebook. I don't want all of our information on Facebook.
Amen. Amen. Welcome back, Facebook. Amen. Are there anything, anything else? It is so good to see all of you here today. Come on, give yourselves some love. Show yourself some love. It is so good to see strong hope in the house when we um, were trying to get through the gate. You know, sometimes my gate has its own mind. And I said, Rich, I said, just let me out right here. <laughs> I said, I'm going to get out. I said, because 10 minutes come past before this gate opens. <laughs> and uh, Rachel said, March? She said, we got, she said, look at the parking lot, babe. We got some people today. I said, well, okay, well, praise the Lord. I wasn't thinking about that, but as soon as I came in, I saw members. Well, praise God for your presence today. Thank you for being here today. Thank you for being here today and worshiping God in the sanctuary. And of course, we thank God for those who are on Facebook and those who are on conference call. God has truly been good to us in so many, many ways. Well, if there's nothing else to be said or done, let us all stand to our feet. Thank you, Reverend Davis, as always, Amen. for helping usher us into the presence of God. Thank you so much. Let's look to God our help and our strength. Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Let all of God's people say, Amen.